thanks Eric, and thanks to the organizing committee for organizing again this nice bot conf conference. Um, today I'm going to talk about a group that is named Asylum Ambuscade. Um, what is interesting with this group is that it's at the border between cybercrime and cyber espionage, which is quite rare. Uh, before starting, quick presentation of myself. I've been a malware researcher at ESET since 2016, and I mostly do reverse engineering and tracking of uh, IPT groups. First, I'd like to give some context about our interest uh, around Asylum Ambuscade. As you probably know, ESET has, been, has dedicated a lot of effort in the past 10 years, and even more last year, uh, into uh, analyzing and controlling threats in Ukraine. Um, and for example, last year, uh, we found many wiper campaigns and also a new version of Industrial, which is a piece of malware aimed at disrupting the power grid. And so during this last year, we regularly heard like, people or in the media, for example, saying that Russian cyber criminals are targeting uh, Ukraine and its allies. But is it really true? And are they really engaged in this war effort? And that's why I'd like to show this example today. Um, so for example, I, I took an example in Radio Canada uh, because it's, where, it's from where I live. And last year, in some articles, they were talking about a Russian group who targeted a, a aluminum smelter. And it was published in March 2022. Um, we have a first quote um, by Alexis, which should be somewhere in, uh, in the room. We're saying that they are just cyber criminals and their goal is just to make money. It's, it's really simple. But then we can scroll down more in the article and we have like a next Canadian security intelligence service. It's always those kind of guys who are quoted in the news article and is saying that the attack is a direct support given to Russian President Vladimir Putin and his invasion of Ukraine. So as a remember, reminder, it was just some ransomware event at an aluminum smelter somewhere in, in Quebec. Um, so with this kind of hot takes, it's not like surprising that everyone in the public is uh, very confused about what is going on and what's the difference between cybercrime and cyber espionage. Um, so let's step let's take a step back and look at the Russian line groups that were involved in Ukraine and the region uh, last year. We have a first cluster of group with Sandrom, Sednit, and Sandbear, and they have mostly been responsible for destructive events, the so-called wipers, so for example, uh, the hermetic wiper campaign by Sandrom, or the Whispergate um, uh, fake ransomware by Sandbear. And they are mostly targeting like Ukrainian government and energy infrastructure. Then we have a second cluster uh, with the Dukes, Invisible, Tiola, Gamma Redon, and Callisto. Uh, they do only cyber espionage against high value targets. Their goal is to steal confidential information. Uh, they don't do like destruction because their goal is to stay in the network for as much time as possible to like, steal uh, fresh information all the time. And then we have this third cluster, which we'll really call the cyber criminals. And it includes, among others, like it's not exhaustive, Killnet, Bootstrap, uh, Conti, and of course, Azalem Ambuscade. So this makes a nice transition to, uh, to the talk. And so the group was actually discovered by Proofpoint last year. They, they published this blog post in uh, March 2022. Uh, Researchers at Proofpoint say that the group conducted a phishing campaign against the staff of a European government involved in the help uh, toward refugees. And um, yeah, and at that time, the, like the war has been running for about a week. And they give more details, say that an attachment with a malicious macro and that download in a malware. The malware is called Sunseed, and it's developed in Lua. Uh, according to our visibility, uh, most high-profile targets were located in Eastern Europe, uh, mostly around Ukraine. And uh, we noticed that the group was especially interesting 
uh, in diplomats and people working at ministries of foreign affairs. So now let's see what's the infection chain. Uh, it starts with malicious documents. So these are a few examples. Most of the time they use malicious documents with, with VBA micro. Um, but at some point they also started to use the Folina vulnerability. And so the malicious documents are attached to spear phishing emails. Um, most of the time the malicious document is XLS documents with a VBA macro that will download a MSI installer from, from a CNC server. And this uh, MSI installer will download the Sunset downloader, which is downloader in Lua, and the persistent is established by dropping a LNK file in the startup folder. So nothing very uh, complex, um, but this is just the start of the chain, and then this Sunset downloader can actually download additional plugins. And one of them will install another downloader, which is actually like Sunset, but in auto hotkey. Uh, it's called AHK bot. It's really the same thing at Lua, at, as Sunset, but instead of Lua, it's in auto hotkey. And what's different for this one is they have like real spying plugins. So for example, they are ones to take screenshots or to steal passwords. So this is what uh, Sunseed looks like. It's a somehow obfuscated, uh, but after a bit of manual work, it's possible to recover some uh, Lua pseudocode. And basically it will take the uh, serial number of the C drive of the infected machine then send a HTTP GET request to a hard-coded CNC server. Um, th this group almost never use domain names, so in all their malware, it's directly the IP address which is hard-coded, and then the GET request is just slash the serial number that was um, uh, retrieved just before. Then the reply is either null or um, some Lua code, which will be directly interpreted. So it's actually like a downloader, it downloads Lua code and interprets it in memory. So this is an example of uh, the plugin that is responsible to, for installing the next stage. So uh, it will download the mscore.e.hk, which is like the HK bot script, and also the mscore.exe, which is the auto key interpreter. As you may have noticed, this group really likes scripting languages, so they have started to, to develop the same thing in many other languages. So, for example, there are, instead of uh, Lua, there is a second stage in TCL, but it's actually the same thing, except in, I think in this specific example, yeah, they did not retrieve the C drive serial number, but it really looks the same, probably the same person, uh, just redevelop something in a different language. And this is what HKBot is. Again, it's, it's the same thing, but in another scripting language. Uh, so it retrieves C drive serial number and then does HTTP get request to the AP slash uh, the serial number. This is an example of plugin that is downloaded uh, by AHKBot. So this one is uh, called Rot Server On by, by its developer, and it will download a, a, a rot called Remote Utilities. It's more or less uh, like a legitimate rot. Um, like there is an official website and you can, you can download it. And yeah, it will like download, download it and install it on, on the victim machine so then attackers have uh, have direct access to, to the machine. There are many more plugins. Uh, yeah, the list is quite long. Um, few interesting ones are uh, Death Screen, which will take screenshots of the victim machine. Uh, the HVNC ones, so it's not really a real hidden VNC. It's actually a headless uh, Chrome instance that can be uh, controlled remotely. Um, I'm not exactly sure what's, what's the purpose of it, but it might be to enable attackers to, to browse on internal websites that will not be accessible from like, the outside network. 
Then there is a browser password stealer, the root server uh, uh, plugin that I just shown before. And th the delete cookie was one is really interesting because when I first analyzed it, I noticed that, um, so this um, plugin will delete cookies on the infected machine for very specific uh, domains. So delete cookies in the, in the browsers. Um, and it will delete cookies for mail.ru and td.com. And td.com is one of the like, biggest uh, bank in Canada. So it's probably really unrelated to, uh, to cyber, cyber espionage, but most likely to, to cyber crime. So it started to be, to be interesting. Um, I'm, I'm not really sure what's the final purpose of delete cookies, but it might be either for the attacker to hide uh, traci traces on the infected machine if they connected to, uh, to one of, of the bank or my account, or it can be to force the victim to uh, reconnect to their, uh, to their account so, so that using, for example, the keylogger or the password stealer, they can steal uh, their password. So from this discovery, I started to, to check uh, if I can find like early reference of, of this tool set. And I found this uh, trend macro article from, from 2020 um, that described a credential stealer targeting US and Canadian bank customers. And if we scroll down a little bit, uh, we can see this nice overview of the infection chain. It starts with a, uh, Excel file with malicious macro. Then it drops an auto key downloader that can download additional scripts from the CNC server. Um, it's quite familiar, I guess. And if we scroll down again, we can find an example of, of, a, pl of a plugin, which is the password stealer. And we can compare it to current version of the, their password stealer. And actually, it's exactly the same. So the tool set used um, in the uh, cybercrime campaign described by Trend Micro and the tool set used by Asylum and Buscade is like, exactly the same. So it's a it's good link uh, between uh, both events. So is it an example of cybercrime group that switched to espionage at the, beginning, at the beginning of the war? So is it like our example of a group that will really like support uh, the war uh, in Ukraine? Actually, not, because since uh, 2020, they have been targeting government officials and people working in state-owned companies in Central Asia in, and in Armenia. And we think that the group is active uh, even on the cybercrime part since early 2020, so it will mean that yeah, the group is doing cybercrime and cyber espionage since the beginning. Yeah, so it's, it's not true, and they have been doing both. Speaking of cybercrime, since October 2022, we noticed that there was a big increase of, of their campaign, and they have been targeting a like, lot of people in the last months. Um, it's a, it's a map uh, of the victim. As you can see, most of the victims are located in Canada and the US, but we have also victims like everywhere, um, in Europe, South America, uh, even few in Asia, and also in Russia. Um, we counted more than 4,500 victims since uh, January 2022, so there are mostly victim for the cybercrime campaign, cyber espionage uh, victims are like uh, really just, just a few. And there are big spikes of, like in the last month, there have been big spikes of infection almost every month. So at the end of November, December, um, mid-January, and beginning of March. So now, how do they infect their victims uh, for cybercrime campaigns? Uh, they, most like, they most of the time use the traffic direction system to redirect uh, targets to the malicious pages. Um, in our telemetry, we did not observe how people landed on the first node of the TDS, uh, but open source reporting suggests that attackers are sending spear phishing emails with links or spear phishing emails with PDF 
attached that contain links to the first node of the TDS. It's also possible that uh, visitors from compromised websites are donating to the TDS because um, in most cases we didn't observe any email or PDF. So this is an example I found on urscan.io um, of a redirection using like the TDS that Asylum Obuscade is using. Uh, so first, we have like a first uh, URL on localkitchencodes.com. Then there is a redirection to chokesechem.com. <laughs> and uh, finally, the, the last URL, um, which is on te techfosolution.com. And this last domain will deliver a JavaScript file, like a JavaScript downloader. And this is the name of, of the downloader. The format is m most of the time the same. It's a document, then a date, it's a date of the campaign, and then a random number, .js. And there are like dozens of those chains with uh, different domains all the time. Uh, so the network infrastructure they are using is quite large. And sometimes users are also redirecting to fake Zoom pages or fake TeamViewer pages, but the, do the payload is the same. It's always a malicious JavaScript downloader. Um, but what is interesting is uh, the TDS doesn't seem exclusive to, to Ethereum and Ambuscade, so it seems that other groups, other cyber criminal groups, are also using the same redirection mechanism to redirect uh, people to, like, to their malicious, uh, um, to their malware. So for example, we have like, this chain, which is like chain of Ethereum and Ambuscade. The last node of the TDS was uh, nakodamachine.com. Uh, we have this uh, document. Uh, 1st December, blah, 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 .gs. And finally, on the victim machine, we observe that the next stage is was uh, HKBot. But then if we look on Varistotal uh, for this uh, domain, we can see that another MSI package was downloaded from, from this domain. And this MSI package will drop a PowerShell downloader, which will then download a stealer from, from a group. Uh, and it... Uh, the PowerShell will download a stealer from a domain, which is download-cdn.com. This domain was used by TA505 in 2020. Of course, the ownerships probably change, but for sure it's not part of any Asylum Ambuscade chain. So it means that other cybercrime groups are also leveraging the same TDS to distribute their payloads. Uh, we also observe um, um, few infection chains that looks like Qbot. So I'm not really expert in all cybercrime groups, but uh, for sure, like this TDS is used by other threat actors. So it's probably a pay underground services uh, that Asylum and Biscuit is using to to have to have installations of their malware. Um, we did not observe that, but on, on the internet, I found that few people reported that there was a Google Ads, a malicious Google Ads to, uh, to the malicious website, especially the TeamViewer and Zoom fake page that I shown earlier. So there is a blog post, blog post by Sense uh, about that, and you can see like this uh, uh, malicious ads, which will then redirect to, to the fake TeamViewer page. So now let's take a look at uh, the malicious JavaScript. Um, so it's, it's obfuscated, but the final goal is just to, to download an MSI package. And I think that all the first part, uh, except like till the MSI, is, is operated by, by some group, which operates the TDS. And then the, the MSI and what comes after is operated by, by another group, in this case, Xylem and Biscay. If the target executes uh, the GS script, it do not, so the MSI package will drop this uh, VBS downloader, which is again like Sunseed or HK bot, but in VBS. And this can download additional MSI packages. So those MSI packages include packages will drop HK bot or also a new Python script loader. And in those campaign, we observe new HK bot plugins. This is the Python script router. It's quite simple, but as usual, uh, the code feels like it's 
the same person who develop uh, all, of, all of those tools. Um, another one is HCMD, which is a reverse shell in node.js. Uh, it has replaced the hash VNC, which was like the headless Chrome I, I talked earlier. And yeah, the goal is just to spawn a cmd.exe and execute command and send the result back. There is also a new password uh, steerer. And what is funny is there is a command in Russian that say, Here's, here it is not known what the function should return. So I guess they don't really know what they are doing. Uh, it's a bit reassuring. And yeah, a auto key script to get information about the Active Directory, uh, for example, using netgroup function, and also NL test and system info. And of course, the final stage is a cobalt strike. Um, we didn't observe what comes after. It's likely that Ethereum Buscade is reselling this installation to, for example, ransomware operators. This is a cobalt swag config. Um, what's interesting is that they use the jQuery malleable profile, and also we can check the watermark. is a It's a known watermark that is used by many uh, cybercrime groups, so I guess it's a leak cobalt swag builder that is available somewhere on the internet. And last month there was few updates. So first they started to redevelop everything in Node.js including the AHK bot. So <laughs> it seems the pattern is always the same when detections are, uh, when their malware are a bit too much detected, they, they, they redevelop it in another scripting language to decrease the detection ratio. So this is the main uh, backdoor. So as you can see, uh, it will again take the um, serial number of the C drive and then does HTTP get request to the CNC server. They also started to redevelop some of the plugins. So for example, this one is a uh, web, web browser password stealer, um, and it targets few few browsers. And all the screenshotter, which relies on external co tool called Irfan View uh, to take uh, the screenshots. So as of now, not all plugins were uh, ported to, uh, to Node.js, but I think they are working on it. <laughs> And also in March, they are starting to play with a LNK file, which was very trendy among all, or almost all threat actors in 2022. And they were also playing with a .pub file, which are Microsoft publisher uh, files, and as other Office files, uh, it, it, uh, it's possible to, to put VBA micro in them. Uh, this is an example of test of Ethereum Ambuscade operator on VirusTotal, which try to uh, to bypass one static detection engine on VirusTotal. So as you can see, it was quite quick because in 26 minutes they were able to to bypass static detections. But at some point, they successfully increased to uh, to five uh, or four detections. Um, quick note about. Attribution. Uh, I mentioned the first uh, proof point blog post, but there was another one uh, published in February. It's about the cybercrime part, and they track it at TA866. Um, so now the question is um, are the esp espionage and cybercrime uh, cluster uh, the same group, or is HK bought a malware kit for sale, or the malware as a service platform? So uh, first, there is low level of activity. Uh, I said that there was 4,500 victims. So if the malware was widely shared among many threat actors, I expect to see uh, way more uh, victims. Second, network infrastructure is very similar. Uh, servers are configured the same way. They are hosted on the same hosting providers, etc. And also, the malware samples are quite ba basic, and you can buy uh, way more sophisticated toolkits. So uh, I'm not convinced that it's people will really buy it. Um, so our assessment is it's a cybercrime group that is doing espionage on the side. Um, it's not clear what links they have to any like security service, but 
if they are targeting diplomats around Ukraine, it means that they know to, to whom like feed the data. And yeah, we have two hypotheses for like the cyber crime part. It can be either to fund the espionage operation or for personal profit. But espionage operations are really a little part of the activity of the group. So as I said, it's more likely there are criminals, like cyber crime part is for their personal profit and they do espionage on the side. And now, uh, quick information about like the possible origin of the attackers. Uh, already shown like few like lo um, comments in Russian, but there are more. For example, this one says my number for debugging, and it's likely the uh, C drive serial numbers of the developer of the malware. Um, and if you remember, the targets of uh, espionage operation were first uh, government entities in Central Asia since the beginning of uh, the activity of the group, and then they recently. Uh, switch to uh, Eastern Europe and neighbors of, of Ukraine. So it suggests that attackers are somehow connected to, to Belarus or, or Russia. Uh, so let's conclude this talk. Um, as you know, Ombuscad is doing both cybercrime and cyber espionage, but we believe there are cyber criminals uh, doing a few cyber espionage operations. They have basic tool sets, but they tweak it all the time. They will redevelop the same thing in other scripting languages to bypass uh, antivirus detections. And finally, uh, we believe with medium confidence that the group is aligned with Russian or Belarusian interests. Um, I think we have a few minutes left, uh, so feel free to ask questions. Could it be some state uh, employee that try to get some money outside of their daily job? Yeah, it's possible, but if he was employee of some security service, he would already have access to some advanced toolkit to do their espionage operations. Um, this is rather unusual toolkit for, for espionage. It's really like cybercrime-like toolkit. Any other question? Okay, last question. Uh, thank you for your presentation. Have you observed the same behavior from other classic cybercriminal uh, group doing a little bit of espionage on the side during the Ukrainian war? Yeah, uh, I, f I forgot to talk about it in the, in the conclusion, but no, I think it's one of the, or the only example of cybercrime groups that is really doing like targeted attack for espionage purpose. Um, at least that's, we didn't observe any other group doing the same thing. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you.